The Fiat 500, one of the most iconic cars on the road and a huge sales success since its rebirth in 2007. But the modern version has always disappointed from an objective point of view. That could be about to change. Because this third generation Fiat 500 is fully electric. Now we'll start with the styling and the design. The car itself is longer and it's wider, but the look of it is very similar. Straight away, you know exactly what this car is. There are a few differences on the front though, namely the 500 badge, which replaces the Fiat badge on the nose of the car. And I guess that gives a kind of indication of just how big the 500 brand has become. Another big change of the headlights, you've got LED daytime running lights surrounding the main headlight and they've kind of quirkily split it. So you've got this eyebrow on the bonnet and then the other bit on the bumper. So it does have an interesting light signature at night. It does look quite cool, quite quirky. And just like the original, you've got a strong bonnet line around the front, which then goes around to the side with this metal trim here with some flush door handles now. There's a release under there, which keeps it looking fairly sleek and tidy down the side. And then at the back of the car, this is where it's very similar from before. You've got exactly the same proportions, it seems. Really similar look. It is just slightly more chiseled. So outside, if you love the 500 as it is now, you're still going to love this. And inside, that is where it is actually very different. Big changes inside and it was needed because the previous 500 which actually by the way is still going to be on sale alongside this car is a mild hybrid which is a bit confusing that inside was just all over the place really the quality wasn't very good the layout of everything was a bit confusing and muddled and one of the worst things about it was the driving position but with the 500 electric they've completely thrown all of that out the window started again and what we've got is something that actually has a very good driving position You've got a lot of adjustment in the steering wheel, which you didn't have before. The pedal alignment seems good, although we are driving a left-hand drive vehicle. Let's hope that the conversion to right-hand drive doesn't mess anything up there. And lots of adjustment in the seat as well. So that is a massive step forwards, as is actually the feeling of quality in this interior. So you've got some nice materials on the dashboard. Some of them do feel plusher than others. The consistency is not as brilliant as it is in some other electric cars particularly down here these bits feel pretty cheap and up on the door card these are some scratchy plastics as well but the look and feel generally is pretty good there are of course some quirky 500 bits to point out in here as well like inside here the picture of the 500 plus to open the door you've actually got a button rather than a handle but of course if that doesn't work there is an emergency release at the bottom as well up here, you've got the Turin Skyline for the wireless phone charging. And actually, while we're here, this is a very useful tray and one of about a million examples of storage areas that you've got up front. So as well as the wireless phone charging tray, you've got a decent sized storage compartment here with an extra USB port and a 12 volt socket. This armrest can move forwards and underneath it, you've got another storage compartment and then topping it all off, you've got the surprise cup holder at the bottom down there all of which is very useful. Plus, the tech has moved forwards a lot as well. Now, we've got the all singing, all dancing, biggest infotainment screen. If you go for the entry level Fiat 500, then you just get a smartphone cradle. Above that, you get a seven inch screen. This is the biggest one that you can get, and it's actually really good. Really nice, crisp, clear graphics. The only problem being is that the text and the icons are a bit on the small side. So there are some screens that you get to where there's a kind of overwhelming amount of information and, and text on it. So it'd be better if that was simplified and if these icons were a bit bigger, but still a clear step forwards. And by class standards, this is pretty good. Plus look below the screen and you've got some physical controls for the air conditioning, which is great. Although they do feel a little bit on the cheap side, but still, Lots to like about this Fiat 500 up front, definitely. In the back, things aren't quite so positive because for a start, it's a three-door car. So you've got to fold down the front seat, clamber into the back, and then once you're here, there isn't much of anything really. If you're over six foot, you're really, really gonna struggle for legroom and headroom, 
isn't great either. I'm under six foot and I would have to be doing some pretty serious negotiating with the person sat in front of me to try and get some more usable leg room. I can't sit up straight either because the roof line is sloping down so much that I have to slouch slightly to fit back here. So even by small electric car standards compared to a Honda E, which really isn't a big car, that's more accommodating for rear seat passengers. And then when you think this is actually also up against the Peugeot E208, then that is significantly better on rear seat passenger space. Although interestingly, with the 500 electric, you can get what Fiat calls a three plus one body style, which gives one extra rear door to ease access into the back seats. You can also get, as well as this standard three door version of the car, you can get a convertible, which Fiat says is the only four seat convertible that is 100% electric. So there isn't much space in the back and the boot isn't huge either. It's still bigger than what the tiny Honda E offers though. In the 500, you'll fit three carry-on size suitcases in the boot and in the Honda, you'll fit just two. But a Peugeot E208 fits five and a Renault Zoe, six. So clearly there are more practical small electric cars. Anyway, it's probably time that we drove the 500 electric. So there are a few 500 quirky features to point out like that startup jingle and also at low speeds up to 12 miles an hour. While other electric cars give you a kind of space age electric hum to warn pedestrians, it's the acoustic alert system. In the 500, you've actually got, if you can just about hear it, I'm not sure if you can, you've got an Italian song from an iconic Italian film, apparently, which is nice. Anyway, we are in a perfect setting to test the 500 because we're in a multi-story car park on the 10th floor in London. And I'm gonna start by testing the turning circle to see just how good it is. And I can confirm it has got an extremely tight turning circle. <laughs> I think this would even get the Honda E a run for its money, to be fair. And it's front wheel drive, the 500 as well. So all the more impressive. But clearly, this is a car built for scaling multi-story car parks at extreme speed and just generally cruising around town. So as I descend, what is there to tell you about the 500 electric? Well, there's a 24 kilowatt hour battery and there's a bigger 42 kilowatt hour battery. And there is a difference in power with the motors that you get with them. But the main difference between those two different versions is the range. So on the entry level version, it's really cheap, impressively cheap, that car, but it can only go 115 miles WLTP, which isn't very far right now. But if you go for that bigger battery, then it can go up to 199 miles, which is very competitive, but here is the first problem with an Italian car in London. We'll have to reach across to let myself out of this car park in a hilarious manner. Bear with me. So, of those two different versions of the 500 you can get, it's pretty clear, isn't it, that you're gonna to want to go for the 42 kilowatt hour battery. The 24 is cheap, but 115 miles now, that's just not a lot really, is it? And if you go for the bigger battery, you also get a more powerful electric motor, but really the gap in pace between the two cars isn't actually that much. So clearly, the main reason you would go for that version is to just have the bigger range and it's totally worth it because it isn't a huge step up from the 24 kilowatt hour version and you get so much more range. What else is there to tell you about the 500? Well, there are a few different driving modes, but those different driving modes don't affect the steering or the accelerator response. What they do is they try and eke out a bit of extra range for you. So there's normal mode, there's range mode, and if you put it in range mode, then it activates one pedal driving. So when you lift off the accelerator, you can bring the car to a complete stop. And around town, you're gonna to wanna to stick it in this mode because it's really good using that function in traffic. And it basically means that you hardly ever have to touch the brake pedal. Now, this third driving mode is called Sherpa mode. And when you put it in Sherpa mode, what that does is give the car a 50 mile an hour speed limit. It turns off the AC and all the climate control functions. And it tries to eke out even more range from the battery. Now, Sherpa seems like a bit of a weird name for this 
driving mode, to be honest, because obviously I, I get it, Sherpas are there to guide you home, be your guide, but unless I'm missing some kind of iconic link between Fiat and Nepal or Mount Everest, then it just seems like an odd choice. But around town, you're probably gonna to want to stick it in range so you can maximize the one pedal driving function, which is really good, works really well when you lift off. It naturally slows you down, brings you to a complete stop, and it's really quite simple to judge the stopping distances, and you hardly ever have to touch the brake pedal, really, around town. But again, over these broken surfaces, you can just feel the ride struggling a little bit. But it feels quite nippy. It's not an especially quick electric car compared to its rivals, but it's certainly got that kind of zingy acceleration around town, which you'd hope for. And clearly, town is where the 500 excels. The light steering and small dimensions make it really easy to place. It doesn't lean much through corners and there's plenty of grip. But it's not quite as fun to drive as the Honda e, which also offers a more comfortable ride than the slightly choppy one on offer in the 500. One other complaint is the noise. When you're going further afield on the motorway, there is quite a bit of wind noise, but still. Overall, it's a great EV on the road. Compared to something like a Honda e, that does steer a little better, rides better, it's a bit quicker as well. And really the 500 is going to be against electric cars like that, you know, like the Honda e, like the Mini Electric, where you've got these electric cars that are very fashion focused and style led, but none of them actually have particularly amazing ranges and they're all really expensive as well. So if you slot the 500 into those groups of rivals, then really it does very well because it's cheaper than a lot of them and it goes further than a lot of them. And it's still got the 500 brand association with it, which is gonna be really strong and mean that some people have to buy it. But this is actually a 500 that you could recommend. In the previous fuel powered 500, it really it just wasn't a very good car. And it's felt so old by the end of its life. And in fact, it's not even off sale now, it's still going. And it's basically, a lot of it is the same from the car in 2007 that was first launched. So while that was difficult to recommend and there were plenty of other options that were significantly better, this 500 electric certainly is a much more recommendable option, for sure. What I also really like in the 500 is the driver display. It's incredibly crisp. I think this is some of the best, clearest graphics of any driver display around. And another good thing with it is that you've got a few different viewing modes you can put it in, but it still has that kind of classic circular 500 dial in the middle of it. But like with the infotainment system where the text can be a bit small and overwhelming, so too for the driver display, because if you go for the trip information, for example, it suddenly brings up what looks like, you know, a novel's worth of font for you to read. And that is just slightly confusing and overwhelming on the move. But you can put it back into its home setting and there it's just really bright, crisp, easy to see everything that you need. Really good, really impressed with that. So the Fiat 500 is a very good electric car. Compared to other style-led EVs like the Honda e, the Mini Electric, this Fiat 500 is better on range and it's better on price. But when you do compare it to something like a Peugeot E208, that car is just a bit of a more rounded electric car offering. Slightly more practical, we'll go even further on a charge. So that does look a little bit better value compared to this 500. But still, there is really a lot to like about this car. It's got a really nice interior. It's great around town. So if you want to buy a new car, go to whatcar.com to get a great deal. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a like. Any thoughts about the car, leave a comment below and make sure you're subscribed because we've got loads of new car reviews coming out every week.